Jeff Cook and this is Backyard Basics. As most of you know, I'm a county agent in Taylor and Peach County. So we came over to the Peach County office, my home away from home, um, to talk about a very uh, timely topic. We've been getting rains for two weeks now, so we decided to talk about water. We've also been getting uh, a lot more wa questions about and water samples coming into this office, to the Taylor County office, and I've been hearing a lot from Crawford County as well. So I thought I might address that. Maybe that would help some of you folks uh, answer a few questions of what's going on or what you're seeing in water and give you a better idea of what we need when you do decide to water sample. So we're going to go inside. Um, maybe we'll have a few clients come visit and we can talk a little bit about water testing and what we do and, and what we need and what you're going to get from that water test. So it's the first of October and most of you guys in Middle Georgia know it's been raining for two weeks. Uh, sun hadn't come out except for one day I think. So on the cloudy days in Georgia, this is what county agents like to do. Go ahead and read this uh, 500 page book about domestic water quality use in the home. That's how we become such experts on water quality and water testing so we can help you guys out when you bring your water problems to us to analyze. All right, so these are some of the issues that we deal with concerning water quality. Hey, how you doing? Hey, I'm Jessica. I'm Jeff. Good to see you. Um, I just wanted to know if you could test this, because me and my friends just got a new house that we're renting, and we have a well. Okay. We want to know what's like in it and how we should like treat it. Hey, funny you should ask. <laughs> Um, yeah, we can do that definitely, and I tell everybody this is this is what I tell I tell everybody the same story every time. Um, if you got a private well and you've never tested it, you should always start off with what we have. It's called an expanded water test. Mm -hmm. Most county offices it runs around fifty dollars, mm -hmm. and that's going to give you all the parameters you need to know if you decide that you wanted a water treatment system. Okay. Um, after that, and it also tells you if you've got any issues that need to be addressed. EPA sets maximum minimum levels of different uh, elements. Um, and different you know, pH and things like this that can be in your water. So uh, we make sure that your water's in those parameters. Nothing looks out of whack that you know, might say that you've got a wellhead problem or something like that. Um, and then from there, you can decide, well, is this water something I need to get treated? Do I need to put a system on it? And then you can take that, that sample plus a few comments and you can um, take it to a water treatment system company mm -hmm. and you can show them that. You say, this is what I need. Rather than taking a, a, a you know, a much smaller test and saying, what do I need? And they just have to guess. Uh -huh. You end up paying a whole lot of money for maybe a system that you don't need. Okay. And then what I would say doing, if you're in college, like most kids for more than five, six, seven years, you'll be there for a little while. Yeah. So <laughs> what you could do is next year, you could come back with the same water sample, you know, a smaller mm -hmm. water sample, and you could actually just do a basic test. Okay. The basic test has some of the same stuff as our big test. So you could compare. If something on this basic test is a lot cheaper too. If something on that basic test looks a lot different than your, your big test, then you might want to look and try and figure out what's going on. Um, and it can give you some, you know, it'll, it'll give you ideas of what might be happening in that well. Um, and next time, if, when you do bring a test, you don't need to bring your gallon milk jug. You actually, um, for, the, for the test that you're looking at doing, the expanded or the bigger, larger test, something like this, okay. or what I tell a lot of people, you know, an old drinking water bottle, Okay. It's fine. Just make sure that what you do is you run the water for a little bit, just get it out of the lines, and then clean the water, clean the bottle out with the water you want to sample. Bring it to us, and we'll get it sampled. Um, and then when you get the smaller test, all you need is a something like this. Okay. You know, 15 or so milliliters. That's all we need. It's a small test, and that will be all the stuff you need. Okay. Well, thank you. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, hey, how you doing? Good. Hey, John. Jeff Cook, good to see you. Nice to meet you. Um, I'm trying to open a restaurant. and uh, Is it a chicken restaurant? Yes, it's okay. a chicken wing restaurant. Okay. And um, our water is just in no condition to drink. Um, I was wondering if you could help me out you know, in any way. Well, if it's no condition to drink, you probably should move locations. But, now, okay. honestly, <laughs> um, it's hard to tell. It's really hard to tell water quality by looking at it. Mm -hmm. um, you know, if it's dirty, that's a good sign that there's something wrong with it. Um, if it smells bad, if it tastes bad, yeah, but um, it's, it really is by visual, it's hard to tell if it's, you know, what really is going on with water. You know, a lot of our water is clear, <laughs> but, you know, it might have things in it that you might not want to drink. Um, so, but, but, but what, you, what you need to start with, since you are doing... <laughs> I didn't think the water was this funny. What, what you need to start with is 
uh, what, it's a W33, but what it is, it's a, it's a water test that you have to get for any kind of water system that you're going to be serving to somebody. Um, if you had a daycare, um, in our area, if you have, um, if you have workers or, or laborers that you house, anything like that, if you have housing on your property, anything like that, you have to have the water sample done. It's a W33. It's just water, it's, a, it's drinking water standards just to make sure that you actually have good drinking water. So what you would need is this, this bottle right here, take it to your well, to your, wherever your well is, um, and get a sample, show us how to bring it in, we'll send it off, get it submitted. It tells you a lot, a lot of different parameters, and then once you get this form and everything, everything's okay and it's in line with the EPA standards, then you're good to go. The other thing that you would need is a bacterial test. Okay. Um, coliform and E. coli, you know, there's two that are going to cause issues at gastrointestinal. Um, you know, they don't want you serving, you know, they don't want you serving bad chicken. They don't want you serving up bacterial, e, you know, E. coli or coliform in your yeah. water. Um, or cooking with it. So um, this one's a little different. Um, what you need to do, they only accept this Monday to Thursday. All of our samples go to Athens. I don't test them myself. I don't drink them, see if I get sick, smell them, play around in them, see if I can figure out what's in them. We send them to a really qualified lab in Athens. Um, they do all the I testing. So. They yeah. send it back to us. Uh, same thing with this. This is the test for bacteria. And um, what you'll see is it's got a, it's a sealed bottle um, that has a neutralizer in here that's going to kind of keep the bacteria from dying and what you do is you go to your faucet, your tap, wherever you want to do it, neutralize it or sterilize it with chlorine, not flower scented chlorine, not color safe chlorine, just regular old chlorine bleach, Chlor uh, chlorinate it, clean all the bacteria out of it. If it's got any filters in it, get those out then, and then clean it off. And what you'll do is you'll peel this back, uncap it, do not touch the rim, Carefully fill it to your 100 milliliter, cap it back, do not touch the rim, don't spit in it, don't sneeze in it, don't pick your nose, rub on it, that'll <laughs> contaminate your sample. And yeah, then what we need to do, what we need to do is we need to take this sample and we need to have it overnighted. It needs to get to Athens by say 12 o'clock or so or the, the following day so that they can run the sample. It needs to be there in 24 hours. Okay. That's the only way that they'll run the sample. It's got to be there within 24 hours. They played it out. No bacteria, you're good. Some bacteria, you gotta do some cleaning. Right. Um, but that's what you need. So you can take these with you. Um, yeah, that sounds good. Um, and it ends up, it, it varies by county, but this is gonna probably be, I think about $150 worth of testing. Okay. But if, for okay. what you're doing, so restaurant. As as we get clean water in there, I'm, I'm good with you that. Gotta be you gotta be safe and yeah. you gotta follow the state rules. So that's what you're gonna Absolutely. need. Absolutely, yeah. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah. Good luck. Okay. Thank you. Oh, hey. Hey, how are you doing? Good, how are you? <laughs> hey, Jeff Cook. My name's Kate. You really didn't have to bring the fishing ball in there. Well, I just wanted to let you know that I'm an avid, avid fisherman. And my neighbor was telling me that since I haven't been having very good luck in my pond lately, that maybe I could bring my water in and get it sampled by you and you could help me get some major killer bass out there. Well, it's a good thing you're not an avid hunter because this is the magistrate court and somebody would have shot you. If you True brought fact. your rifle in here. True fact. Well, I'm glad you came in here though because we can test your water. Um, one thing we do, we can actually send your water off, have them tested in Athens for water quality, but I don't normally recommend that because the biggest thing we want to do in ponds is we want to create an algal bloom which will feed our brim. And our brim will in turn feed our bass. You know, we all want to grow. I like those big bass. We all want to grow a monster largemouth bass, so we got to have monster brim, right? Healthy, happy, healthy brim will have happy, healthy bass. So what we test for is we test for hardness, alkalinity in your pond water, which will in turn tell you if you need to apply lime. Just regular dolomitic powder lime. Lime like squeezed lime from the grocery store? Not like lime like squeezed lime or lemon. No, we're not trying okay. to make it tart. No citrus. We don't want it to taste better. All right. We want it to actually produce more. That We want the water to be able to uh, hold more bacteria, or not bacteria, plankton, phytoplankton. Those in turn feed the fish. So those are good, those little tiny plants, right? They're the really, fishy. really, really tiny. Yes. Yeah. Okay. But you can't even see them. Right. Until they're in a big bunch. Or you got a microscope. Oh, or a microscope. I mean, this person right here is. I think she's been in the extension college, office before. College educated. I think she's been in the extension office before. So yeah, that's what we test for. Um, another thing that when you do get that algal bloom, another thing it does is it shades out any aquatic plants, plants that might come up from the from the ground, from the you know the, the floor of the pond. So it keeps your weeds down. 
So it's you know multi-purpose here. So I don't need none of those ugly carps. No, you don't. Okay. Not necessarily. There can't. That, but that's a whole other show. Oh. If we want to talk about pond management, we can go into a whole other segment right here, because you could need pond. You could need carp. If you got a shallow pond, I don't know, but we're not going that way. But we'll no go aqu in. aquaculture in today. No, we're not doing aquaculture. We're just doing water. water. Um, but I have this handy dandy test kit, and I think that we can do it real quick, and I can tell you if you need lime or if you don't need lime. And I don't think that I'll mess up anything here in the magistrate court's office. Oh, look at that. And luckily, we need 100 milliliters, and you actually have 100 milliliters marked on your old pickle jar. I it's, counted every liter out. I hope that Billy it, style. I hope that it was actually a pickle jar and not for something else. Um, so we can do this real quick, I think. Do a titration test. This is a fancy word for put a bunch of drops in here and see if when it changes. Do that. Swirl it around. Put this red dye in here. It didn't do anything yet. Not changing. No, it's not doing anything yet. Okay. That's the buffer. Ah. That buffers it. This makes it turn colors. This is scientific here. Hopefully it'll turn like a reddish color. Purplish red. Okay. Is that reddish? That's yeah. Cranberry is what I like to call it. Cranberry, well. I'll put that one in there. And the titrant solution. So what does that do? It makes it change to blue. The quicker it changes to blue, the softer your water is and the more lime you got to put out. So from a pond owner standpoint, you want it to take me about 25 drops to change it to blue because that means you only need about a half a ton of lime. Half a ton of lime weighs a whole lot less than two tons of lime. Two tons of lime in a pond that's more than one acre hurts your back. That's a lot of shoveling. It doesn't hurt your pocketbook that much because lime's pretty cheap, but it hurts your back. So, you want it to change pretty rapidly. So we'll just do say five drops, swirl it around, and it should change. Oh, it changed. So it might be hard water. Uh-oh. Is that the top? And I'm not good with color, so you might it's have to- It's changing a little bit. A little bit? Looks a little more purple now. So now it should, it should turn to blue. Does that look blue? Looks pretty blueberry to me. Does it? Yeah, there you go. So 15. So 15, so you need about I'm a halfway ton. to a bad back. You need about a ton. About a ton of lime, put it out this fall. Make sure your grand, maybe, maybe your grand youngest come and see you. Thanksgiving, have it all piled up around the pond. Let them help you spread it out there, spread it around the pond. Next year, you can start fertilizing. Start fertilizing with like a 0 20 20 um, once every two weeks until your pond darkens up like you like it. And once it gets, once you get a good color, it should stay. Once you put the lime in there, it'll help you keep your pH. It'll it, stabilize. It'll, it'll stabilize. The fertilizer you put in there will stay. You'll have that algal bloom all year. Your brim will be happy. Your bass will be happy, and you won't have to spray for weeds. I like the blooming algaes. Blooming algae. <laughs> So, is that it? Am we good? Yes, sir. Okay. I appreciate that. I'm going to keep your water, okay? okay? Unless you need that for, Can some, I drink it? for some shine. No, you don't drink that. Oh, okay. No, don't drink that. Well, hey, hopefully help you out. We appreciate Tell it. Tell your friends. I'm going to try. Okay. Oh, hey. Hey, how are you doing? I'm good. How are you? Oh, hey, Jeff Cook. Oh, it's Wendy Johnson. Good to see you. How are you? What can I, I do for you? I came by. My water smells like eggs. Like, like stinky. Like hard boiled eggs or cooked like eggs? Like hard boiled eggs. So like sulfury? Yes. Okay. Well, we can't really test for it. It's pretty tough to test for it. So we don't need that water sample. So how do I test my water? <laughs> most likely what it is is hydrogen sulfide. Mm -hmm. um, most likely your water, it, okay, there's two things that can be happening. Okay. Your water could be coming over just hydrogen sulfide pockets in the soil, picking up that smell. The, the, the gas is in your water. It's trapped in that water. When it gets up, when it's, when you bring it up through your well, the gas is still trapped. So when it gets in your house, boom, that gas can be released. You've got hydrogen sulfide gas in your house. So they pass some gas in my house. The the water is. Mm. Now it could be, you know, Taco and I could be your cousins, I don't know. But most likely what it is, is it's the water coming out releasing gas. Um, the other thing it could be, is it cold water or is it hot water? Or is it both? Both. So it's not just hot water. Right. If you would have said hot water, which would have been a great answer. 
that would have just led right my, to my next answer. Okay. If it was hot, just hot water, mm -hmm. the, there's magnesium heating element in your hot water heater. Okay. That magnesium on that heating element can react with the um, hydrogen in the water okay. and create hydrogen sulfide. Okay. So, and it'll, it, it does the same thing, it creates the same gas, that gas is released. So a lot of times you take a hot shower, you smell more, that more, more of that egg smell, the sulfur smell. Mm -hmm. uh, but if it's in both, then most likely what you have is you have hydrogen sulfide in your water. Mm -hmm. So it's, the, the gas is going both your hot water heater and it's coming in cold water. The only thing you can really do is some sort of aeration. So, and you want to do that outside the house. Okay. That'll let the hydrogen sulfide gas out of the out of the water. It'll be released. Some sort of bladder tank by your well mm -hmm. that lets it aerate, that lets a little bit of air in, lets the gas out. It can kind of vent. Um, we'll let the hydrogen sulfide gas out. Then when it comes to your house, there's no more gas. There's no more egg smell. Uh, so probably working with like a well guy. Oh, we have that. Yeah. Or okay. you might even find something. There's a lot of different products you can find. Lowe's and Home Depot, Home mm -hmm. Improvement Stores, that you know you can you know put little filter systems or aerators on um, well water coming to your house because you know usually well water and those systems aren't really big, so they're not. Oh, okay. They don't. You don't take a lot of money and a lot of space and not a, not a big system. Okay. All right. All right. All right. Hopefully, help you. Okay. Thank, right, thank you. you. Bye. -bye. All right, so we added a little humor to it, but you know, water water quality and you know, water safety is a pretty important thing. Um, as I said earlier, I recommend that everybody with a private well get at least a basic water test, but really get that expanded test. See what you're drinking. And you know, everybody says, "Oh, I got crystal clear water; it tastes so good." But just looking at water, nobody can tell what's in it. Um, so get a sample, bring it to us, bring it to one of your county agent office, a county office uh, somewhere in, our, in in Georgia. They can send it to Athens, get it sampled, and get you a good answer on. You know, and you can get a good look at what you're actually putting in your body, what you're cooking with, bathing with. Um, before I finish up here, I have to read something, but I wanted to make give a little shout out um, to a couple students in Taylor County with the Ag Program. Um, some students cre competed in career development um, events in Fort Valley uh, the first of this month, and two of them actually placed. We had Peyton Parker uh, competed in tractor operations and maintenance he placed fifth out of 21 students and april currington competed in job interview she placed 14th out of 21 students so some good stuff coming out of our ag department our ag program so far already i uh, just wanted to give them a little shout out a pat on the back and say congratulations um let y'all you know if you see those students tell them you know good job well way to represent taylor county um so i'm gonna sign off like i said i'm jeff cook this is backyard basics where we're filmed in your backyard <laughs>